Today we will be learning about multiplying decimals. Um, the top part says what I already know about multiplying decimals. We will be filling this out during class tomorrow, so just make sure that you have that blank. If you already remember some things from sixth grade, you could go ahead and jot them down in there, but otherwise we're going to continue this tomorrow and you're going to fill in what you learn after copying down the notes. First, to start off with, multiplying decimals is our vocabulary and our first word is decimal. A decimal is a number written using a base a base 10 system. A base 10 system. Each place value each place value is 10 times the place value to the right. So for example, if you have a decimal point and then a number behind the decimal, that's called the tenths place. But then when you go to the next number, that is the hundredths. That is 10 times the amount of the tenths place. Then the next one is called the thousandths, and that is 10 times the hundredths place and so on. Every single one is 10 times the one to the right. Next vocabulary word is product. The product is the answer to a multiplication problem. So for example that would be 5 times 8 equals 40. The 40 is what the product would be because it is the answer after you have multiplied. This is the product. Our next vocabulary word is factors. Factors are two or more numbers that are multiplied, multiplied together to form a product. So 5 times 8 equals 40. 40 is our product, but the 5 and the 8 are our factors. These two right here are the factors. You multiply those together to create 40. Another one would be like 10 times 4. Those are factors that make a product of 40 as well, or 2 times 20. All right, so to begin the notes, we have... When multiplying a decimal by a whole number, we multiply as we would with whole numbers. You, multi you multiply it the same way as you were going to do 5 times 8. If you were to add a 0.5 and a 0.8, you would still multiply them the same way. So first, you need to make sure you always line your numbers up. Line your numbers up. Don't worry about the decimal. Just line your numbers up just like they were whole numbers. Then to place the decimal in each product, the product is after you've already multiplied them, so to place the decimal in your product, you count the number of places behind the decimal in your product. So, for example, if I was multiplying 0.5 by 0.8, I would have one number behind this decimal, one number behind this decimal, so in my answer, I would have two numbers total behind the decimal if I was going to use that example. So we're going to start with an easy one, example number one. First, we need to line our numbers up just like they were whole numbers. So, I lined them up. I did not worry about the decimal in 7.12. Just line up your numbers like they're normal numbers. Ignore the decimal until the end. So, 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 7 is 28. So, now is our final step of we want to place our decimal in our product. So count the number behind. So there are one, two, two places behind that one. Since four does not have a decimal, technically the decimal's at the end, but you don't see it. So there's no numbers behind that decimal, so zero. 
So we need a total of two total numbers behind the decimal. So we count one, two, and we are done. 28.48, 28.48, and we are done. Um, make sure you don't just drop your decimal straight down like you're adding and subtracting because it doesn't always line up that way. This problem, it happens to be right above it, but that does not always happen. If there was a decimal here, then you would have three numbers instead of just the two. So you can try example number two on your own. Flip the page over. We are going to try number four also. So let's line number four up because it's a little bit different. It has a whole, bunch of num a whole bunch of zeros right here in this number. So technically there's only one whole number which was a two. So let's put the bigger number on top, 5.89 times 0 0.02. Now, this is a three-digit number times another three-digit number, but since there are zeros in the second number, it makes it really easy because we don't have to worry about those zeros. We just have to worry about multiplying the two. So pretend just like they're whole numbers, and you really don't have to worry about those if they were whole numbers. Nine times two is 18, carrier one. Eight times two, 16, plus one, 17. Five times two is 10, plus one is 11. So we have our answer because we don't need to do zero times all of these and then zero times all of them again. That, that's just extra zeros down here we don't need. So let's count how many numbers are behind the decimal. So here's my decimals. One, two, one, two. So there are four total numbers. Two plus two makes four numbers. So I wanna count one, two, three, four numbers need to be behind my decimal. And since there's no extra number up here, you could put a zero right there just to make it look correct with a zero hole, and then circle your answer, or put a box around it. So we had four total numbers behind the decimal in that one. Let's try one more together, and then you will be on your own for the rest. So let's try number three, because it's a little more challenging. We have four numbers here, and then three numbers. So you have to make sure that you are lining all your numbers up correctly. All right, so I have all my numbers lined up. My five is right on top of my three, and then the 14 is right under the two zeros, and then we have that one extra for the 100. So let's go ahead and start multiplying. Five times three, 15, carry our one. Three times zero is zero, but plus one more is one. Three times zero is zero. Three times one is three. Now, when you begin your second row, you are done with this three. So you can mark it out and put a zero. We're done with that number. Four times five is 20. Four times two, or four times zero is zero, but plus two is two. Four times zero right here is zero. Four times one is four. Now here's where a lot of people go wrong. They forget totally about that third number, that one. So now that we have done two numbers, we mark out both of them and we put two zeros since we're done with two of them. Now we do one times five is five. One times zero is zero. One times zero is zero. One times one is one. Now we've done all three numbers. So we should have three total rows since we have three digit number. So let's add these together. That's five, that's one, five, six, seven, three, four, and one. So I have this big long number, one, four, three, seven, one, five. But my final um, step is putting our decimal in. So we count, there was one number right here behind the decimal. There is one number here behind this decimal. So I need two total numbers, add those together, there's two, to be in my product, one, two, and I'm done. So instead of this answer being 143,715, it's actually only 1,000, and you can put the comma if you want, 1,437 and 15 hundredths. So now I have left about four or five examples for you to try along with this tax example. I know we don't do tax anymore, but this is a good example of multiplying decimals. So you could try this um, and then summarize what you learned.
like one or two sentences about how you would multiply any type of decimals together. Bring this with you tomorrow to class and we will be going over it.